Hi guys, this is Raf and welcome back. With the new iPhone release, of course, there's always a new iOS version. So this is the iOS 15. According to Apple, iOS 15 is packed with new features that help you connect with others, be more present and in the moment, and explore the world and use powerful intelligence to do more with iPhone than ever before. They don't have any kind of big changes, especially on the design or customization like in iOS 14 or in Android 12. This iOS version is just more a refined iOS 14. Most of the changes are for the sharing and notifications. But there are some other small changes that are really great too. Now in FaceTime, we have SharePlay. This will let you share and watch movies, listen music, and share your screen with other people while you're in FaceTime. Although it's not live yet and Apple said it will come later this year. There are some other minor improvements too like spatial audio, portrait mode, some options for mic modes, you can also send FaceTime links to other people so that even they're on a different platform like PC or an Android phone, you can now video call with them. Focus mode is a beef up version of Do Not Disturb mode. Technically, it will give you more customization on the notifications that will show an organized app and widget pages on your iPhone home screen to match your activity. You can create focus mode for work for sleep, for personal use, and etc. Focus mode status works system-wide across your iPhone, Mac, and other devices, which is a good thing for people who wanted to have that option instantly to all of their Apple devices. Although you can have an option to turn it off, that system-wide focus mode, if you just want it on your one device. Focus mode will show also on your messages like in away mode in different chat apps. You can also automate the focus mode by location or by time or even by the apps that you will use. They have redesigned the notifications and they have included contact photos and bigger app icons to make it easier to see and identify the notifications. You will have now an option for notification summary. So what it will do is it will compile all of your notifications for the low priority apps and it will schedule to show it on a certain time. Normally, it will show around 8 a.m. in the morning or 6 p.m. in the evening, though you can change the time when it will show. Notification summary is great for handling those notifications you want but necessarily don't need to see right away. It will help you lessen to receive annoying notifications from other apps that you don't use and it helps declutter your notification panel. Safari does have a new updated design. It's now easy to type in search since the tab is at the bottom part. You can swipe left or right on the address bar to move between tabs or swipe up to see all of your open tabs. There's an option for tab groups and it will also sync to all of your devices like on Google Chrome. You can also now install a Safari extension on your iPhones. There are a lot of good things that was added on the maps as well. There is now this cool 3D mode, which you can now explore cities with detail for roads, neighborhoods, trees, buildings, and many more. Though it's currently limited to certain places yet. So there's this new driving feature, and it will show you the road details and driving maps that will help you see current incidents and traffic conditions on your trips. They also have this street view like option on Apple Maps and it's great. The moving transition from one street to another is really smooth and it's much better than Google Maps. Though this street view option on Apple Maps are limited to certain places only. Live text. This is one of the new features that I really use a lot. On the camera app and photo apps, it can now recognize text and even translate it and you can search it also on the web. This is really a helpful feature when taking down notes, whether you're in classes or work, or if you're trying to get hotlines or phone numbers. The app privacy report creates a summary of all of times your installed apps have collected your data over a seven day period. So this report includes information regarding access to your location, microphone, photos, and contacts. It also displays any third party domains your apps may be contacting so you know where your data could end up. It is a very good tool for monitoring your privacy about your data 
and you can activate it by going to settings privacy record app activity then toggle on there are a lot of minor features that was added on the ios 15 though you can also further check it on the apple website of all of the list of the new features but most of these new features are not really new because most of this is already present on other platform like android especially with the google apps like google meet google maps google lens just to name a few what apple is trying to do here is they're trying to catch up now and they're copying the good things on the android apps and using it to improve their services too but i really like the improvement in the notifications the updates in maps the live text although i'm not totally convinced with the focus mode yet since for me it still let you have access on your apps that you don't put on the focus mode via the app library overall it's a good update it's pretty much stable with some minor bugs that i noticed mostly in the notification panel i'm using an iphone 11 and performance is just okay but i feel like that ios 14.8 is smoother than the ios 15. i tried to do a benchmark but it showed the same result so there's no change I didn't notice any battery drain so far and battery performance still the same and it's great. If you want to get the new features, you can go ahead and update to iOS 15. But you can also wait till the next iOS update to make sure all of the minor bugs will be fixed. So this is my iOS 15 review and thank you for watching my video. Please like, share and subscribe and see you soon. Peace out.